Expo. You're all doing good? I got a chance to see a lot of you walking out on the floor and saying hello. I love spending time with you. What a way to start. How about another huge round of applause for Jordan Fisher? I am guessing that a lot of you recognize that music. You recognize that music? Yeah, that's the theme song from Happily Ever After at Walt Disney Resort. Yeah. If you're anything like me, you just flash back to standing up on Main Street watching the sky light up over Cinderella Castle. You know what? Let's get started with announcement. Right off the bat, do it, do it, just for you, our biggest fans, I am so excited this year that next year, bring back the Happily Ever After. It's an update in Magic Kingdom, so my text factor. I know you guys love this stuff. I know it. I love it too. Now, I'm so, so grateful that you're on this journey with us. Now, I know that change can be hard, and we may not get things perfect all the time. But I also know that you want to be part of what we're doing and where we're headed, and that means everything to us. So then, where do we go next? Well, on Friday, Bob Chapek, he talked about the future of our company and how he wants to revolutionize entertainment yet again. And I can tell you, we see an absolutely boundless future in front of us where our theme parks, and even beyond our theme parks, they inspire the wildest imaginations and they exceed our greatest expectations. We're gonna talk a lot about that future today, but I wanna start with what makes the D23 Expo so, so special. This event that gives us a chance to celebrate all things Disney, including, of course, our love for all of you, our fans. New attractions, we've got new character moments, we've got new nighttime spectaculars, and there's so many other cool things going on there. And now, Epcot is only a short few weeks away from its 40th, its 40th anniversary. And there is so much happening at the park as it continues its transformation. All right. How many of you have been on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Club? In September? You know what mine is? September! going to do just a little bit of a dance up here. My daughter is somewhere in the background. She's like, please, Pop, do not do it. I can, I can kind of dance, but you're welcome. We all know that's a great track. Now, every time that I hear that track, I'm thinking about Cosmic Reef. Let's go over to Disneyland Paris, where I hope you can see this finished this fantastic Time to Shine 20th anniversary celebration. And then we're looking forward to Tokyo Disneyland's 40th anniversary next year. And then finally, as we wrap up this totally amazing year of milestones, we'll officially hit the 70th anniversary of Walt Disney Imagineering on December 16th. These are amazing people. Amazing people. Award-winning filmmaker Leslie Iowa, she's hosting a panel discussion with our Imagineers later today celebrating this anniversary, and she has produced a fantastic video tribute and that's going to be shown over there for the first time so please get over there and check that one out. 100th anniversary on October 15th, 2023. I mean what an incredible milestone for our company and as you've all been hearing all weekend we are going to celebrate next year in a big gigantic huge way like nothing that we have ever done before. When I look back over our first 100 years, what jumps out at me is how we are just constantly reinventing ourselves, telling new stories for brand new generations. You all know this, we need those stories now more than ever. And that's a lesson we take straight from Walt. He believes in the power of storytelling. Our incredible cast members, the people who make that all happen, they, they carry on that legacy each and every day. We'll be here. You guys ready to come along on a little journey with me? All right, well, 
And let's jump into this boundless future because there is no limit to where we're. Where are we? We are literally down the street from. We are down the street from the Disneyland Resort. We got a lot of Disneylanders here. I know that. So let's start right there. You know, I got my start at Disney at the Disneyland uh, Resort, and no matter how far I am from Disney, it always feels like home when I come back. It just marked its 67th anniversary, and I loved watching this special place transform over my time with Disney bringing all of your favorite stories to life. One of the biggest additions has been Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I got a chance to help open that in 2019. And since then, Star Wars storytelling has just exploded. We're seeing all kinds of new characters and tales from that galaxy far, far away. And one of the folks responsible for some of those new stories is Disney legend, John Favreau. Maybe you just do the rest of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, first of all, thank you for, for being here with us today. It's yeah. always fun. I think last time was when we opened Avengers Campus. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. got to hang out up on stage there and see that all come to life. Yeah. Uh, you're a huge Disney Parks fan. Yes. I know that. You're obviously, a huge Star Wars fan. Uh -huh. uh, you you talked about some cool stuff yesterday. I think the day before. Sure. How's it feel standing up in front of all? It, it's people? great. It's great coming back here because it's you know. It's been so long since we've been able to all get together like this, and the energy is great. Look, it's great to see people posting videos and communicating online, and there's a big conversation that goes on in the digital world, but to all get together in person like this is, it's really wonderful, and I'll tell you, not just for myself, but everybody else associated with it. The energy that you all give back, it makes it, you know, that's why we love doing it, and, and the energy is fantastic, and, you know, you're all cheering there, and it's fun, but I can't tell you, it affects everything that people like Josh do, people like we do, because we know how much it's appreciated and how much fun everybody's having together. So I just want to reiterate the appreciation that we have to all of you for letting us really love to be Well, I can you know, see that in John, I remember standing uh, in 2019 in Disneyland in front of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and there was a group of people, I'm sure some of you were there, who, who came in, and there were tears coming down face as they, as oh, they saw some There's a lot of the people we work on the show with, like Doug Chang, a yeah. lot of the people from, from Lucasfilm and ILM. Yeah. They were all, you know, it's a big group of creatives. You know, you think about Imagineering, they're such a, a company with so many different departments, but everybody comes together yeah. to work on things like this. I have the passion to get it right. We love the, the source material as well. And when you first walk into that too, it, it's, it's, it's super cool. And I remember seeing the Millennium Falcon. I was there when they when they open that park as well. So it's just been, um, just as a fan of Disney and of Star Wars, and you know, George Lucas, like Walt, really understood how to mix storytelling with technology, yeah. and how to create the magic using the, the, the latest and greatest that's available. And you know, Walt, we think of it as kind of old fashioned, but if you think of audio animatronics and monorails and all the technologies that he was pushing forward, it was, you know, in the 50s and 60s, it was crazy, and it's nice to see that we're continuing to keep that legacy alive with all these innovations yeah. that you're announcing. And they're going to keep coming. Good job when you're standing up here on stage, you get to do all these kind of sneak peeks and things like that. Uh, I get to do it sometimes, but not like you guys. You want to, you want to do something like that today? Well, I figure we. this is the perfect place to introduce people to something new, yeah. right? Well, okay.
safe journeys, man. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. Josh and the team in the Imagineers. Galaxy's Edge inside Disneyland starting in mid-November. So just a few weeks away. John, thanks for being here today. Thanks for everything. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you all of you. Thank you. Thank you. I was backstage with Jordan Fisher a second ago, and he bumped into, actually, he, didn't, he hadn't met me before. I said, this is Kevin Feige. Jordan was having a tough time breathing up here. <laughs> All right, first things first. First things first. Did anybody see Kevin and his team up on stage uh, yesterday? <laughs> I've, got, I've got an issue. So Kevin gets out there. And he says, well, I don't get to do Broadway style things. And he comes out, and there's people dancing on the stage. And I'm like, what the heck is, that's my territory. That is the, that is the Disney inspiration he brings to all of us. Yeah, well, God, and all of us. Okay, thank you. I'm going to start making Marvel movies, though. You know, the Imagineers want to make Marvel movies. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Well, listen, my, my team loves working with you and all the amazing things. I know you're a, you're a big fan of Disneyland. You've got Avengers. All of the parks, Disney. all of the parks have, and it, it is still, I pinch myself. Not just that I get to make movies, but that I get to interact with the Imagineers, with Josh, on bringing these to life. Disney is, uh, we've been a part of Disney now for over 10 years, and it was always the promise, gosh, maybe someday we could have something in the parks. And now that day has been here for a while, and I thank you for it. And I thank all of you fans for coming to embrace the Avengers campus. Everything is going to be hard for the market finally. Well, we got Avengers Canvas here. Um, hey, hey, hey guys. What's up, guys? I'm just going to jump in quickly. I, I'm watching a live stream. This is amazing. Um, but I, I just I have one, one suggestion, just off to the side. You know, Avengers uh, Campus is incredible. And I'm just asking you, maybe suggesting that you expand the palette a little bit. You got red and blue. You got you got, you got red and gold, you got black and silver. I'm just saying, you might need a little color. How about a little green? Just uh, a suggestion. Uh, asking you to think about it. I, I, I'll let you guys know. I think you guys did an amazing job. Sending my love to everybody. I'm just going to step back and, and finish watching the live stream and hope there's some good news. I think, I think, how do you get that number, first of all? You should have that number. This is a, but I think you should be people on them and start working on that and get that in the works. I think that'd be pretty cool. You guys oh, want to see a Hulk at some point? Yeah, I want to Isn't this Avengers Campus? Yeah. I was supposed to meet Steve and Nat at Avengers HQ. I don't know what happened. What is this? One of those something cons? Something? This is D23 Expo, Hulk. Oh, the time-space GPS must be off. Now I'm annoyed. Oh, Hulk, we would, we would love to have, have you at Avengers Campus. Maybe you can do like a, a, a meet and greet and your fans, you can do like a visiting professor kind of thing, something like that. I like it. I can make that work. Avengers Campus, get ready. <laughs> well, great, great to see you. Hey, can you find the exit? Can you find if the not, exit? I'll make one. <laughs> Third attraction from the beginning here, but when 
when you filled us in on the multiverse, that sent us back to the drawing board for what this could mean to our land. And now, working with your team, Imagineers have come up with a concept that is entirely new. So, Kevin, we've got all of our biggest fans here in the room with us today. What can you tell us about the story and this new experience? Well, you know, the, the fun thing about Marvel is the characters, all the characters, all of the time. And with the multiverse in Avengers Campus, you're going to be able to do that. And in this new attraction, you're going to be able to battle alongside all the Avengers against all the foes from anywhere, from every win that you could possibly imagine. And you're going to meet a new villain named King Thanos. This is a new version of Thanos for the very first time coming into the MCU via this attraction. And he's got a cool white beard too. And a crown. This is this is a Thanos that won. And the Avengers are not too happy about that. And you have to help them. So Kevin, uh, you all need to know when we're building these new attractions, he is in this every step of the way, making sure the story comes through and it's exciting for all of you. This is incredibly exciting. He is incredibly exciting, and this is coming soon. And in honor of this special announcement, we've turned the awesome artwork that you saw and you're seeing right here into a print just for everybody in this room today. We're the only ones today, and we'll have it on your, your way out. And in honor of this special announcement, we've turned the awesome artwork that you saw and you're seeing right here into a print just for everybody in this room today. We're the only ones today. And that you have to run your, your way out. This, this, this print was made by the amazing Ryan Miner, and you should all know who he is. He's been the head of our visual development at the studio. He's designed almost everything you've seen and loved in the movies. And these are just some of the characters. Some of whom you've met before, some of whom you can look in there and you haven't even met just yet. We continue to have big plans for Avengers Campus here in California. And that's all I can say for now, but I promise you we're going to keep you updated on our progress here in this amazing, growing land. New for you in Disney California Adventure. Just around the corner from Avengers Campus, I am excited to share that we're about to reimagine Pacific Wharf into San Francisco. <laughs> Technology meets tradition. We're still in the early phases here of this work, but you can see glimpses of what's to come. There's going to be a place to meet. Baymax, of course, and spots to eat and do shopping and all of that. It's going to be a great experience as we continue to tell new stories in Disney California Adventure. Over across the street, this hotel is going to be super, super fun. You'll feel like you walk right into a Pixar art gallery. You'll see new interpretations of favorite characters like Woody, Buzz will be there, Mike, 22, Miguel, Dante, and all the, the Disney Pixar characters that you can think of. Of course, Pixar, Pixar's artistry will be the core of this totally refreshed experience. It's going to include fantastic communal areas like this Finding Nemo themed splash pad. The hotel is going to feel completely new. Concept, a piece of concept art uh, that I think is coming along really well in school. We have several other announcements planned for the next uh, year and into the future, but I want you to be the first to hear this one. We're bringing a Southern California favorite to downtown Disney. It's a place that I love, I hope you love. It's Portos. <laughs> For those of you that have, in fact, experienced Porto, you know, you know that this bakery is famous for its sweet pastries and its treats and its savory Cuban food and, and all the incredible desserts that they have. And trust me, it is all delicious. Now, some of you, I imagine, some of you out there in the audience might be wondering, well, what is this all about? Let me just say this. It's really good. That way you try it, you are going to love it. And you know what? You're not going to have to wait long because we are giving you all a special treat from Porto's today. <laughs> but, but, 
don't run out and get it right now. Okay, we've got a lot more to share before you get those pastries. And speaking of the last Marvels, 2017. Well, the races are coming back. The races are coming back. In 2024, we're going to have a lot more details on that, the registration, all the fun stuff that comes along with that. But listen, I can't wait to see everybody out there again. I can guarantee you I will be out there running for you, Which I love. I think some of you might know. I'm a huge, huge Mickey fan. Now, this reimagining of Disney's Toontown, it's going to be fantastic. We are really stepping into a new era of inclusive experiences in this land of families for all ages. Now, I know from some of you out there that there was some concern that poor Donald is going to lose his favorite poem. Rest assured, everyone, it's still there. Here's a first look at, at a new rendering that we have where you can see he's crashed it into Goofy's pond. And here, in this new rendering, you can see one of the silliest areas of new Goofy's How to Play yard. It's a fun, interactive sound garden where little ones will discover new ways to make all kinds of places. A little bit more about that. I want to hear from some of the Imagineers who are leading this project. So everyone, please welcome Carmen Smith, welcome Sharia Carter, and Ted Rivera. Well, I guess Ted dances. <laughs> right? I should have been out here a little bit earlier. I didn't have such luck with that. Well, listen, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, here today. Attend, I'm going to start with you. We know that our story picks up right where the Princess and the Frog left, left off. So bring us into the story. Thank you, Josh. So, as we all know, at the end of the film, Princess Tiana realizes her lifelong dream of joking to Tiana's house. I mean, she's such an inspirational character, and in our brand new story, she's become this great entrepreneur and community leader. So, the year is 1927. And to celebrate carnival season, she's hosting a party for the people of New Orleans. But she discovers her celebration is missing a very special ingredient. So, and she needs our help to go find it. So we're going to join Tiana and Lewis. We all love Lewis, right? We're all going to take a magical trip to the Bayou, where we're going to meet brand new friends to invite to the party, and they have a very special role. Story sounds amazing and how much passion you guys are pouring into it. But I'm excited about the, how the team is bringing this experience to life in some new and special ways. So, Sharia, tell us a little bit about how this attraction is all coming together. Okay, well, first of all, Josh, I just have to let you know we have the most amazing team working on this attraction. Yes. <laughs> and, I agree with you guys. It's amazing. and we are having a lot of fun with mock ups, making this a transformational experience. When we are in these environments, it's important that they inspire a sense of awe in us. So we are taking advantage of that massive structure by using the latest cutting edge technology to further enhance that sense of grandeur. And as you can see here, this attraction is going to be gorgeous at night. What I have always loved is when we, are, we have the opportunity to take our tried and true techniques and then combine them with our digital tools for animating and lighting to just create a brand new attraction experience for our guests. For example, we're going to use this like a painter's canvas to create this amazing sense of aura, which is going to be different from anything that you have seen in an attraction. It's something that I like to refer to as Bayou, true Bayou magic. And Josh, that's just the tip of it. I know. Well, I, love, I love this idea of true Bayou magic. Uh, Carmen, can you tell us a little bit about the research the team has been conducting in New Orleans to make this a like, really, really authentic experience? Absolutely, Josh. I mean, that's what we're all about. You know, even though Tiana is a character in the story, her culture and the place she comes from is very real. We want this attraction to be a love letter to New Orleans. Yes. It's important.
important for our guests to feel how we approach the story in an authentic way. You know, if you're from New Orleans, you should feel like you're coming home. You know, if you've never been to New Orleans, well, this attraction will make you want to go. Oh, I, I love this idea of a love letter. It's a great way to put it. Uh, I know that you and the team have taken multiple research to engage with the New Orleans community. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like, the people that you met? Okay. Well, you know, what makes the city so special is the people. And we've met some incredible individuals and groups. Their perspective have become a filter uh, we're using for all aspects of our work. You know, in search of inspiration, we've been working with local artists, Sharika, this is amazing. You know, she created this and several other pieces to help us along our journey in developing this important new attraction. Um, we've also spent time with Stella Chase Reese. She's really now an honorary Imagineer, an amazing woman. She is the daughter of Chef Leah Chase, who is the inspiration you know, for Princess Seattle. Yes, um, we've been learning more about this important role that food plays in New Orleans culture. And here's one of my favorite quotes from the film. The thing about good food is it brings folks together all aspects of life. Absolutely. Yeah. That is so cool. true and it's said so well. Uh, I know we'll see food come to life in new ways at, at Disneyland too, and you're all going to hear more about that in the near future. Uh, I'm so excited about all of these plans. So Carmen, Sheree, Ted, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you for the fantastic work that you're all doing and bringing to Yama's first attraction to life. Really inspiring. As president of the resort, I got a chance to work with the, the team that was planning the 50th celebration, and I am just so proud of all the new magic and new memories that we're creating for our guests. We've debuted two new nighttime spectaculars. We have Disney Enchantment at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and we have Harmonious at Epcot. Well, both of them have been tremendous additions, and if you haven't seen them already, you definitely don't want to miss them. You definitely don't want to miss them. Because as I've been saying, we are always looking to the future. So I am excited to share that we're crafting an all new nighttime spectacular for Epcot during the 100th anniversary celebration. Brand new show, and this show is in development right now, and it will debut later next year, continuing that park's legacy of inspiring nighttime entertainment on our World Showcase Lagoon. This, this is an exciting time for Epcot because we're getting close to another major milestone in its transformation in the middle of our park. The neighborhood will feature Communicore Hall and Communicore Plaza, two great new locations for our festivals. And I'm also excited about Journey of Water inspired by Moana. That's coming, that's coming to World Nature Neighborhood. It's the story of water on our planet. It's obviously inspired by Moana's friendship with the ocean. And as you make your way around the trail, you'll interact with the water and discover that it kind of has a mind of its own. Now, you are all the first to hear today that Journey of Water and the rest of the center of that park will be ready to welcome guests in late 2020. Before we leave Epcot, I've got just one more real surprise. Thank you, welcome guests in late 2023. Before we leave Epcot, I've got just one more real surprise. There is a character that you can only find. And, and I've got a feeling 
he's probably the favorite on some of the folks in this room. Well, for, for most of our lives, he has, he's appeared only in our imaginations. But for a short period of time, years ago, you could actually meet this lovable purple dragon. Well, I am thrilled to announce that by the end of next year, you'll get the chance to meet Figment in person once again. We have a lot more to share in the future of our teams are right now hard at work bringing Figment to life and I know that you're going to all be excited to be here. And since we're talking favorite cat, return to Disneyland. Our fans have been asking for him in Florida too. Well, foolish mortals, we have heard you. that next year the Hatbox Ghost will materialize in the Haunted of Mansion at Walt Disney World. Now, on, on Friday we announced a new game that I'm really excited about. It's called Tron. I think you'll be able to experience this game from anywhere. But, if you want to physically enter the grid in a thrilling new way, well, I've got the thing for all of you. At Magic Kingdom, we're busy testing Tron Life Cycle 1. This, this will be a huge addition to Tomorrowland. And listen, I know that we've been talking, and then we, and then we were talking, and then, and then we were talking about this attraction for a while now. But I'm telling you, it's really close to being ready for showtime. So close, in fact, I got a chance to take an early test ride, and I figured I'd give you a sneak peek. Take a look. enjoyed that. And what you all saw there, that is just a little taste. Uh, it was great riding with some of the team members who have been so committed to this attraction through all of its unforeseen twists and turns. They're working on a lot of finishing touches right now, and we're excited for you all to experience it. That is why I am thrilled to announce to you today that Tron Light Cycle Run will debut in the spring of 2023. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're going to leave dry land. Our, our, our majestic new ship, the Disney Wish, took her maiden voyage in July. Uh, she's beautiful and is already a huge hit with our guests. And now we're going to build on that momentum, turning our attention to the next entry into our fleet. For our sixth ship, we're dreaming up a brand new design concept that feels unlike anything Disney Cruise Line has ever done before. The, th the theme of the ship is adventure. Celebrating, you knew it. <laughs> Celebrating Walt's lifelong love for exploration, this is going to be an epic journey into Disney stories. And today, you're the first to see what the inside of this amazing new ship will look like. Here we go. <laughs> mystery of a gilded palace. It draws on real-world influences from Asia and from Africa, as well as the far-off land of Agrabah. As you see there, for the first time aboard one of our ships, the signature Grand Hall statue will feature three of our favorite characters, Jasmine, Aladdin, and their lovable magic carpet soaring together towards a whole new world of adventure. Away here, 
there's a little detail. Do you all want to know the name of the ship? Yeah. Let's take a look. There is a treasure, and we can't wait for you to create memories aboard this spectacular new ship. Our growing fleet also allows us to go places that we've never been before. It's going to be a spectacular location for our Disney Cruise Line guests. We have a long way to go, but just imagine the possibilities. That it's going to keep going. That was the first time that I was on the island, and I can tell you now from a personal uh, point of view that Lighthouse Point is going to be absolutely stunning. It's inspired by the stories of the Bahamas, and we are committed to preserving and protecting the natural environment throughout this project. Get this, everybody. 90% of the power used at Lighthouse Point will come from solar energy. 90% of the power. And we're working with local advisors and artists to create a destination that represents the natural beauty and the rich culture of the Bahamas. We want this to be an authentic experience filled with all kinds of Disney magic. Here is a brand new concept rendering that I'm sharing with you all for the first time today. This is a, it's a great overview of what your day on Lighthouse Point will feel like. In addition, obviously, obviously to that gorgeous beach that you just saw a moment ago, you'll have a recreation center food and merchandise locations, a deep activity area, and so much more. Uh, here's another rendering showing a closer look at one of the island's pavilions. Uh, here, you know, guests will be able to immerse themselves much more deeply into the Bahamian culture. Uh, we're excited to create a place where you can learn about the stories and the traditions that are passed down by generations of Eleuthera's residents. Uh, we know how much our guests love Castaway Key. Can't wait for you also to put your toes in the sand on this new island destination. So more to come there. <laughs> that inquisitive fox made her debut at Hong Kong Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea, and the response has been ridiculous. So I thought you might want to meet her too as a special Disney trip. You don't get to see these characters from overseas that much, so why not? Everybody making her first appearance ever in the United States, please welcome the one and only Lena Bell. Uh, you are cute, Lena Bell. As you can see, she's always looking for another mystery to solve. And while she continues to uh, live in our parks in Asia, I am so excited to announce that Duffy and Friends, they're going to star in their own show on Disney Plus. Now it's going to be Disney Plus, a six episode stop motion animated series debuting next year. And if you want to hear more about Duffy and Friends, please be sure to check out the panel later at this afternoon's panel at, at Hyperion Theater. Uh, looks like Lena may have found another clue there. Lena Bell, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to see you. This is so cute. I know you're Now, Frozen is also one of the stories playing a role in the royal transformation of the iconic five-star Disneyland Hotel in Paris. Every guest room and all the communal areas, they're being rethemed, and they'll take inspiration from classics like Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, Tangled, and even more. Here's a first look at concept art for one of our Frozen-themed suites. I, I can't wait for all of you to get a chance to experience this hotel again for yourself and the reimagining is fully complete in 2024. Our third Frozen project is coming to life at Tokyo Disney Resort.
so as you all heard also, we'll say in Japanese, and then her movements will sing specifically to match the rhythm of that language. It's going to be a frozen experience that you just will not find anywhere else in the world. Now, Imagineers turn technology on its head to see what else they can do. And this non-stop pursuit of innovation means that they're constantly trying things that have never done before. And you can't be afraid to fail once in a while. As you can see, some of these ideas, they became experiences in our parks, or our resorts, or maybe on our ships, while others teach us lessons that will send our teams down completely new paths. We don't know yet where some of these concepts may take us, take us and I guess that's kind of the fun part. Because there are absolutely no boundaries when you're dreaming of a big future like this. You know, we've been like a train just barreling down the track of Disneyland Park. And then COVID, it brought that train to a stop. But it also allowed us to spend some time tinkering around a little bit. It was a rare opportunity to stop and think about where we wanted to go. So we took some time to do some things that we've always wanted to try in our parks, but we also had to put a few projects on hold while the world was stopped. Well, now we are back on track. We are picking up steam as we head toward our future and the reimagining possibilities that are in front of us. Now look, what I'm about to share with you is probably going to make a bunch of Disney folks out there nervous. But I think it's going to make you all really excited. Because what we're going to talk about next is way early in the creative process. is what our Imagineers call blue sky. I want to be clear with everybody in here, though. We are not up here daydreaming. It's important to me that you know these things we're going to talk about, they are very real. They are very serious discussions that I'm having with our teams about the future of our parks and experiences. And I want to touch on a couple of them today because, well, you are our biggest fans, and I want you to see behind that curtain. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Now, some of you might know, at one point in my career, I was lucky enough to be leading Disney's Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World. And during that time, I was involved with some of the planning for Pandora, the world of Avatar. It was, it was such an awesome project to be part of. And it was so transformative for Animal Kingdom, and our guests loved that land. But, you know, I was kind of always thinking about the possibilities for transformation in this other area of the park. And that's Dino. I gotta tell you, we see tremendous opportunity here, a chance to tell some new stories that fit right in with what Animal Kingdom is all about. And I'm just so, so excited about it. I can't keep it to myself, so I'm going to share it with you. And I figured it would be cool to invite out two key collaborators to, to come on out here and talk with me about some of our initial ideas. Sound fun? Imagineering Creative Portfolio Executive Chris Beatty and the Chief Creative Officer of the Walt Disney Animation Studios and Academy Award winning filmmaker Jennifer Lee. <laughs> Am I making you guys nervous? Just a little bit. Just a little bit? Just a little bit? Nervous? Well, first of all, thank you both for being here today. Before we get to Dialand, Jen, uh, talk to us about the relationship between animation and, and, and imagineering. What's it like for you to uh, do these incredible things, write and, and direct a tremendous film like Frozen, uh, that becomes an instant classic for everyone, and then see those characters come to life in our, in our parks? What's that like? I mean, it, it's... It's really, it's a complete rush. I mean, parks, I mean, I don't know y'all, they've always meant so much to me. And now to see these stories and characters that we get to work on and that we've created become new experience for the guests, I'm, I'm pretty overwhelmed. Give me a minute. I mean, I was listening to Into the Unknown and I was practically <laughs> turning into pixie dust when you were showing us all the frozen land. So I'll land on Earth in a minute. But you know, speaking for everyone, it's just the animation to say we love, love, love being a part of the creative process for our parks. Working with Imagineers, 
we are we're, we are your biggest fans. I mean, we are. It, it's it, I have to tell you. So, but what's amazing is how it really is this natural fit. It is like being in our story rooms. It's like bouncing ideas around, crazy ideas sometimes, and then of course they make it happen, um, and just seeing where the stories take us. And I've been. Chris and I, along with the team, but she's not, I, I'm like all about like, what it's like being in there for me, but along with all the Imagineers and the studio filmmakers themselves, I've been working together and looking at how we can bring the films from this last decade into the parks in natural ways. Chris, go ahead. It is so true. We love, love partnering with your team at Animation. Getting an early insight into the, the characters and the stories that you're developing, it's critical for us in Imagineering as we move through that blue sky process. Um, let's go back to Dino Land for sure. a minute. I think that's a great, a, a great example, I think, with an important reminder about the ethos of Animal Kingdom. It has to start there. Um, you know, since its beginning, Animal Kingdom has really focused on stories that have this, I, this connection to animals and intrinsic values of nature, and most of all, probably the power of transformative inventions. Josh, a few minutes ago, we talked about Avatar. I love that. That, that is the perfect example of where a narrative and how it embodies these core values to create an experience that can only live at Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with that, Chris. But Jen, talk to us a little bit about how these values play into our our decision making, if we want to tell more stories in the park, uh, what do we think could happen in Dino Land? Well, I mean, first of all, understanding the foundation is critical to our creative thinking. And for us, what immediately came to mind when thinking about Animal Kingdom was Zootopia. <laughs> I mean, how can we tell new stories together about these incredible animals who engage people of all ages? Uh, exactly. I mean, I remember the first time I sat down and watched Utopia, watching Judy Hopps board the train and, and go through those amazing landscapes, and, and the, the animals in those environments just jumped off the screen to me as a possibility that could live in Animal Kingdom. Oh. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be to take our guests into the various districts? I mean, be immersed in Tundra Town, Little Rodentia, Bunny Burrow, the Rainforest District, perhaps even Point Town Senior? Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there are districts and characters we haven't seen yet, right? Oh. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm waiting too. I'm waiting for that meeting to take place where uh, we back to the park. But in all honesty, look, we love Zootopia, but we, we can't help as imaginers to ask ourselves, where else could we go? And your team has done such an amazing job of developing stories that really speak to this idea of connections to nature. Yeah, when I, we talked and I thought about this idea of connection, uh, something else that came to mind was Moana, maybe? <laughs> yes, please. I love the idea of Moana being a Animal Kingdom. I mean, her story is one of adventuring beyond the reef, connecting with nature. I mean, in order to heal the world, save the people, I can just imagine, imagine getting to journey with her, trying to fight off the Kakamora, meeting mysterious animals and creatures of the deep. It would be thrilling. Uh, yes, that that is exactly would be extremely thrilling. That's exactly how Animal Kingdom or how Moana can fit into Animal Kingdom. These are the types of stories and narratives that really I think speak right to the heart of the park. I, I think all of that sounds great, and we have real, real aspirations for this part of the park, and we're all so excited about the possibilities here. Now, Chris. I seem to recall one of those days at Imagineering, uh, you showed me this concept art for what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of concept art, yeah. but yes, I believe we did share some with you early yeah. on. Yeah. And are you going to be a wimp or are you going to share? So you're, you're calling me out on stage. Yeah, what's happening? happening? You, these are our fans By here. Way, I just want to know they are our fans. <laughs> I just want to first watch the job come Monday morning. Yeah, well, exactly. All right, great. Let's just show it. Let's show it. Right. Okay, look, we're going to show you this. It's it's big, it's beautiful, it's over the top. And I hesitate even to call this a concept. Look, we develop lots of paintings like this to help our teams envision the possibilities of what could be. This is just one of them. But I love this one. It's a good one. But I love this one. I know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And I know. I know that there's more beyond just that one part, animal 
Ah, since we're already pulled back the curtain, I'd like to talk about Magic Kingdom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Chris, if I recall, you were the creative director for New Fantasy. And I guess up until like right now, that was the largest expansion in Magic Kingdom in its history. Uh, yes, I mean, Magic Kingdom holds a special place in my heart. Um, I think there are so many amazing stories yet to be told, uh, lands yet to be explored. Trust me when I say this, but imagine we're always thinking about what is next. And one of the con concepts we're most excited about is this, this idea of new frontiers. Um, let, me give you, let me give you an example. So Josh, do you ever wonder if you could travel to the other side of Big Thunder Mountain, what could be? Uh, yeah. Uh, and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm sure that there are about 7,000 people in the audience who wonder what exactly is beyond the country. All right, well, that's what we're exploring. Okay. So we're exploring. All right, so okay. go with me. Everyone go with me. So let's take this journey. Imagine, imagine, what if we could pass over those spires from Big Thunder Mountain? And maybe, maybe, maybe in front of us. There's a valley, there's a valley in front of us with, with the little town of San Cecilia. And, and they're celebrating Dia de los Muertos. And what if, what if, what if we can climb aboard the back of Albrina and fly into the land of the dead? With our familia, just like the Riveras in Coco. That's what could be out there. Of course, I mean, I, I'm just asking, what if we do want to talk about Bruno? Bruno. Yeah. 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 I'm sure you know that there are many of us at Disney Animation who cannot wait to see more in Kanto in the parks. No one could bring a magical house to life like Disney Imagineering. What if you could walk into the magical casita, just saying, meet the family, what if Maribel is your guide, introducing you to all the wonder within those walls? Bruno's tower, Antonio's room, all of it. All of it. What if you can step up to a door and discover your own magic? What if Jennifer is not going to stop? And you know what? She shouldn't. These types of ideas are exactly why I'm so glad that you are both here today talking to our biggest fans about what could be on the horizon here. So let's let's talk about one more. I thought we talked we were <laughs> All right. Yes, let's do it. Let's All right. Well, listen, I, I know this one is not planned anytime soon, but it's, it's something that we know all of you talk about. It's a fun idea that's always in the back of our minds, and it's an area overrun by talents. <laughs> Magic's 
been there from the very beginning. The smells, the sights, the sounds. There's something in the air that is so special and unique. <laughs> the way it connects one to one with our guests. Over and over. <laughs> oh my goodness. Since 2016, we've added more than 200 new lands and experiences and attractions and festivals and so much more. And we've done that literally around the world. And that's why when I tell you that we're just getting started, I hope that you know I really, really mean this. This year, we unveiled Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. <laughs> the Disney Wish. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. And Avengers Campus in Disneyland Paris. Next year, we've got Mickey's Toontown. We've got Tron. We've got World of Frozen and World Celebration. In 2024, we're bringing you Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Story Living by Disney is going to be up and running. And then the Disney Treasure, as we talked about today. And that's, that's not even all. There's so much more good stuff coming. So many new experiences. I, even more than I can't tell you about just yet. We have a massive library of stories and characters to draw from, and we are planning more attractions. We're going to give you more entertainment. We're going to give you more special moments, and more ways to make your time with us even better. More of what you love about Disney. Right now, as we all sit here today in Hall D23, Imagineers are out there thinking of the next great experience you can't find anywhere else but with us. It's how we defined ourselves for the first 100 years, and it's going to define our next 100 as well. Which brings me back to where we started this morning. Beginning in January, oh my gosh, do we have a 100th anniversary celebration in store for all of you. As you know, we're calling it Disney 100 Years of Wonder. And as Bob said, it's going to be the biggest celebration in our company's history. Throughout 2023, we're inviting you to share the wonder with us on social media because we want to hear more of your Disney stories. Each of our destinations around the world, on land and at sea, will showcase the anniversary in their own way. We'll have plenty of new entertainment, we'll have new merchandise, we'll have special new food, we'll have drinks, and so much more. There will be more to share on all of this very soon. But I can tell you, that the heart of this entire celebration will be right here in California. <laughs> Beginning in late January, the happiest place on earth will receive new platinum infused decor and new looks for Mickey and Minnie and her pals. We'll have special live entertainment moments that will pop up across the resort, including the long-awaited return of the Magic Happens Parade. <laughs> I can't wait to experience it with all of you. Trust me, I will be out there. And I'm excited to announce that starting in late January, Disneyland Resort will showcase not one, but two new nighttime spectaculars. <laughs> At Disney California Adventure, World of Color One will celebrate the storytelling legacy all started by Walt. It is going to be a world of color like nothing that you've seen before with an all-new inspiring story told through some of your favorite, favorite characters. And then, the new Nighttime Spectacular debuting at Disneyland Park, Wondrous Journeys, will ignite the wonder in all of us. It'll feature nods to all 60 Walt Disney Animation Studios films, today taking us on a journey filled with artistry, with the music and storytelling, and of course, a ton of heart. It will continue to build upon Disneyland's state-of-the-art projection effects, turning areas of the park into an artist's canvas that brings characters to life around you as the fireworks dance up in the sky. This show will feature an absolutely incredible new song. You want to hear it, right? Uh, you got it. This is the...